Uh, day number 13, up to day unlucky 13. No, that's not true. 13 is actually a good number for me. 13, we were, uh, my wife and I were married uh, 22 years ago, I think it is, 22 years, on Friday the 13th. So I'm not superstitious whatsoever with the number 13. So 13 is going to be a good number for, for this series. So we're up to day number 13 of 30 day uh, of life coming to you every day and uh, so we're nearly at two weeks which is fantastic I've never done anything like this before it's been a lot of fun so far so this is all part of the uh, stronger photo composition four-step system that I've just released uh, tonight in a couple of hours three hours time and I apologize if you're watching the replay of this in <laughs> days to come weeks months uh, it's still available, but it will be full price. So if you're watching this live or you're watching this within the next three hours, you've got until midnight tonight. So three hours exactly from now to get 30% uh, off on that. Now, I don't discount courses. I do promotions. And when I do the promotions, I combine things together and discount that way. So I add value. So an example is that I have planned. I haven't, haven't announced it yet. Here we go. Scoop. Here's the exclusive. With this system, I'm going to combine it with a, uh, a webinar type thing. So go to, to people who purchase and enroll in the in the system, get an invite to a date and time that suits them, and uh, and we'll have a small group we'll go through. So inside inside the course, I have a, a, a section in there. So in one hour, you can get 80% of the content. Just smash it out because that's one of the biggest obstacles for us is that we can't fit it all in. So yeah. Uh, for the, it'll be a, a special deal. This is what I, I typically do. So I don't discount. Say, okay, thirty percent off flash sale. I don't. I don't do that because that kind of reduces the value. And and because as you can imagine, the amount of work that goes into putting together a course like this and designing a system like this, over one hundred twenty different uh, composition techniques and tools, putting it all into a system, recording and all that. It, it's taken me months and months. So what I do do is I will c combine it with an online small group workshop and a webinar, whatever you want to call it, masterclass, <laughs> so, many, so many different terms people use. And, and then that'll be like instead of 99 US dollars for the course, it'll be like uh, 199. So you, you, get, you get like 50% off the actual small group workshop price and it's combined with this course so that you finished your one hour with me one-on-one -on -one or a small group and then you have that resource there for lifetime access so that's the way I do the whole um, adding value instead of instead of discounting make sense all right now that I've done that like I said if you're watching the replay sorry you missed the 30% off but <laughs> there's other things there uh, it's still an absolute bargain at the at the normal price we're going to cover a couple of things here. We're going to cover frame within a frame and framing. Now, framing and frame within a frame are two different things. So we've got two different techniques we're covering today. Now, framing, uh, frame within a frame. Let's. I'll just bring up a photo here to show you. So here we go. This is an example of frame within a frame. So this is shooting through a bollard and what's happened it's, this is actually a square photo that's why it looks a bit weird so you can see here these little rings in the distance so what I've done is I've actually taken the photo through one of those that's created kind of a vista and uh, and then when I've cropped it into a square crop added a bit of a vignette to darken it it was the easiest way then it looks like I'm looking through one of those rings and that's what we're doing we're creating a vista and it was a long time ago I shot this photo, so I'm just getting familiar with it again. Yeah, fantastic. And you can see there, we've talked about leading lines. We've talked about uh, where they put the horizon, all that sort of thing. You can see there the little concrete bits here creating and the, and the, uh, the bolts <laughs> holding the beer together, I guess. They're all leading through to that same point. And then you have a bit of a visual anchor to reward us at the end of it, which is the uh, the restaurant on the end of the pier there. So that's one example. Uh, I'll just bring up my other one. Here we go. So this one here is another example of a frame within a frame. So it doesn't necessarily have to be shooting through something, which, which can be quite creative and a lot of fun. Uh, this is actually taken from inside shooting from
from the seating area. And what I love about this is that at this location, this was this was like the best holiday I've ever had with my family and I can't imagine us having one as good as this again. This place was just phenomenal. And it just views like this out of the windows. And that's what I wanted to capture. And I think by by shooting it as a frame within a frame, it just highlights that 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 this is like a picture. Okay, so that's what I've done there. Is with, they're like, this is as beautiful as a picture. Now, if I had have walked up to the glass, opened the door, and, and just taken a photo, then it, it, it's still, it's the same context. It's the still what's there. It, it, you know, I've captured it all. But by coming back inside and taking this photo, that's, that's storytelling. And I think that tells that story and communicates that story in a different way because it's within a frame. All right, let me just have a look at the course, see if there's anything here that I want, haven't touched on. Uh, you're creating a border around the subject within the photo itself to attract and maintain your attention. And that's that's what it's about. It's about, it's got structure, gives it a structure to the photo because you've got strong vertical lines and strong horizontal lines. So it's giving it structure. So it's looking a bit more formal and a bit more... Um, yeah, formal. That's the best word. I can't think of another one. So <laughs> here we go. Uh, what else have we got here? Da, da. So through windows, a, it's a sneak peek vista to the outside world. And it also creates depth, doesn't it? So we can see here, and we can see that we can in front of us, a couple of meters, and you, and you can imagine this is only a couple of meters in front of us. You can see that there's the door. And I like that the door handle's there, so it encourages you to kind of think, okay, I can I can exit this door and go out. So the frame creates depth as well because that's a foreground interest, if you like. It's not really a foreground interest, but it, it's a it's an element in the foreground. And I think I'm kind of, am I going to touch on this later on? I am. Day 17, I'm going to talk about differential focus. And that's kind of what we're doing here is that uh, – we're placing something nice and close, and as we get further away, we're creating that depth. And you can see there, we have some, now I'm digressing a little bit here, and, and as you know, if you've been watching these, I do this, I digress and throw ex extra tips in there. Notice in the background here, these are nice and sharp, this, this door and the furniture, but then notice as we get further in the background, it becomes less contrast, loses focus. We have that atmospheric perspective issues. It goes by many different names, but that's the one I prefer because it's the atmosphere that's causing that. It's particles in the air over distance that's causing that effect. So that's creating more depth in that photo. All right. Next, I want to cover framing. This is the one you'll be most familiar with. Okay, I'll bring up the photo. Not that one, not that one. This one. Okay. So framing is a little bit different. It is where we use different elements in the scene to uh, bring our attention back in. So we're kind of creating a frame with elements. And those elements are on the edges, and it could be just two horizontal elements here. Like we've got this this hanging, this weeping tree either side. That's creating a frame. Now, if there was something across the top and something across the bottom, well, then that's uh, it's doing the same thing, but it's not required. You can have just two opposite edges will create that framing effect. So if I didn't have anything on the sides, I had something across the top, something across the bottom, it's still framing, isn't it? Because it's stopping us from our attention as, as a viewer looking at this photo. It's stopping us looking out. It kind of forces us back into the into the frame again. So here, it's 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 stopping us from going outside and it's focusing our attention in, in the middle. And if you remember, okay, if, you're, if you've been watching and I hope there's a link down below to the playlist to go back and look at all the other ones, this is an example of, of composition stacking, that is. Now, instead of stronger photo composition four-step system, I was throwing around the idea for a long time of just calling it composition stacking. Uh, but I ran, I ran that past you guys in the community and uh, it was a bit confusing. So... And so what's the point of it? And I said, well, the point of it is to create, by, by combining multiple composition techniques, you create a stronger composition. And, and, and Faye turned around and she said, why don't you just call it stronger photo composition? It's like, ah, oh, 
Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> so that's where the name came from. And this is an example of stacking composition techniques or combining them to create a stronger composition. Now you can see here we've, we've already talked about is the uh, rule of thirds. So you can see there the horizon is up on the top of those two lines. If, if I crop this, then you would see those lines come up. So the horizon's up nice and high so that two thirds is the foreground and our attention goes to those ducks. Now, if, this, if those trees along the horizon here, if that horizon was lower, okay, and say it was down there, sure, the silhouette and the contrast of those ducks would grab our attention, but the sky would become equally as important, okay, as if I just did it like that, then it's all about the ducks. So with create framing, we have those rule of thirds, uh, what else we have active space that those ducks are moving into I can't see behind so I haven't created that visual tension I want because the sky was beautiful I wanted to have harmony and balance in this photo and by creating that that framing and having those there and it's kind of uh, symmetrical as well then that's creating that harmony and balance and I'm going to talk more about harmony and balance tomorrow that's what I'm talking about now because it's already on top of mind so that's what I'm going to talk about that tomorrow so this is an example, and I'll probably talk about this one again tomorrow. Okay, another example of framing here is inside uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. And it's an, it's an example of symmetry. Yes, it is a vertical symmetry that we talked about uh, two days ago. Yep, two days ago. <laughs> We're covering a lot, aren't we? All right, so this is an example of, uh, of framing as well. Symmetry creates framing because... When you split it in half, if you have something on one side, it's going to be on the other side. So we've created that, that framing as well with, with symmetry photos. So here, because the, the, um, you've got light uh, tones in the middle leading to light tones, and then you've got those two dark areas either side of the photo, then that two dark areas is kind of framing that light area, if that makes sense. So the dark is framing the light area. So our attention kind of, we can go out and explore into the dark areas, but we come back into the light areas. Yeah, it, it's fascinating. Oh, but because the dark areas there are, are nice and big and dominant, creating emphasis, our eye still goes to there. Still, We still go and have a look. But because of the diminishing perspective and vanishing point, uh, I'm going to have to bring back the ding <laughs> so that I can ding every time I throw in a bonus composition technique or tool. But that makes sense. This is a framing shot. When you look at it, you can go, it's not really framing because you don't have a tree on one side and a tree on the other, but it doesn't matter. It's the concept of framing is what I'm getting at here. All right, now this one here, on either end of the, either side of the, uh, either edge of the frame, one, I've got a power pole, and on the other side, I've got a light pole. Now they're not identical. They're not even identical shape or size, height, Depth, they're completely different, aren't they? In every sense, they, they are different objects, but they create a frame. They frame that photo. Now, if I crop this photo, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh, can I stretch it? Let's go stretch. There we go. Oh, nearly. I might have to go the other way. Oh, there's that dreaded notch. <laughs> All right. So you can see there, if I actually, can you see it? There we go. Now, if I, if I did a square crop like that, you can see there, now I have imbalance because I've got that big light pole. I've got the, the power line going down to uh, Big Ben. In the, I think that's Big Ben in the distance there. But photo like that, that frames it so much more effectively, doesn't it? Now I'm looking at this photo going, oh my gosh, look at that bright spot there. I'll get rid of that bright spot. Trust me, this never ends <laughs> when you start to pick up new techniques and, and tools and tips. Uh, you always you, you you are your own worst critic when it comes to photography. But when I set this up, I I sorry when I cropped this, I cropped it so that I had a bit of space either side of those two, and that kind of created a frame. More often than not, composition it can be a happy accident like this one. Like I didn't take this photo thinking, okay, I'm going to frame this somehow. There's a pole. There's a pole. You don't think like that. It's just when you go to edit the photo a lot of these compositional techniques and tools kind of reveal themselves in there. All right. Did I have another example? I do. Here we go. I've got one more example here. 
Okay, which one is this one do you think? Do you think this one is a frame within a frame? Or do you think it's framing? Interesting, isn't it? Interesting question. It can be both, can't it? If we have a look, this is in the in the subway and either edge there, either, either side of the frame, we have the edge of the corridor. So corridors create um, framing opportunities, the edge of the walls, the walls create the, the framing, two structures identical either side. And if we look at this, we look through there with that train going past, this was captured on a, an iPhone using slow shutter cam. And, uh, and <laughs> did I use a tripod? I'm not sure, you're not allowed to use tripods over there on the train stations, which is, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, I don't think this was on a tripod, I think this, this was handheld. And you can see the train go past and the doors, the red doors there with the juxtaposition or the, the contrasting color with the background, you can see straight through there, grabs your attention. So that could be a frame, the windows, that can be a frame. So that's a frame within a frame, but we also have framing. So it's another example of combining techniques, which is which is really cool. And uh, oh, trust me, when you start playing around and uh, with my with my four step system, and you you've got all these four toolboxes full of uh, compositional techniques and tools in each of these these groups, and you go, okay, number one, where do I position myself? I want to position myself at a height that I can get the mirrors. And the position I am, I want the train to be visible in those mirrors. So I've done that. Step number one, I've positioned myself. I've positioned myself so that I can get that framing. Step number two, where's the main subject? Okay, so I've cropped this so the main subject is uh, is nicely balanced in there. So that's where I've positioned the main subject. Other visual elements. Uh, yep, and then number four is, what's number four? The editing side of it. So with editing, I can go and blur different areas or I can sharpen different areas to try and pull your eye in. Now, if I wanted my, your attention to go into those mirrors, because it's kind of, it's a little bit lost, but if I if I want you to look at that and I want that to be more of the hero of the photo and compose that in a way that um, draws your attention to those, then I would reduce the vibrancy of the red and the saturation of the, the blue and, uh, and try and bring your attention back to those, make those really contrasty and uh, and make those pop. Hope that makes sense. So there's quite a few different things there. So we talked about uh, frame within a frame, how you create a vista and you invite the person to look into that, that special world. 